Hi, it's Cindy from the Osterville Library, and we are really thrilled today to have Andrew Gallagher. He is with the Trustees of the Reservation, and uh, I bet a lot of you are wondering, why am I interviewing Andrew, and what are the trustees? So, take it away, Andrew. Sure. Well, um, I can get into, a, I think we can get into a little bit of the why in a little bit. Um, we got a pretty exciting project down in Osterville. Um, but just by, by way of introduction for the trustees, uh, we are the state's oldest and largest conservation preservation organization. Um, we were founded in 1891 by uh, Charles Elliott uh, with the goal to preserve special places in Massachusetts, whether they have ecological, cultural, historical, or um, aesthetic beauty. Um, and so, you know, people may know us. We have 118 properties across the state. Often people think of our um, some of our larger properties like the Crane Estate in, in Crane Beach or in Castle, Castle Hill up in Ipswich, Fruitlands Museum in Harvard, World's End and Hingham. Um, but really in those 118 properties, it, it, there's quite a range. And so for folks who are on the Cape, um, they may be familiar with Dunes Edge Campground out in Provincetown, um, Lowell Holly Reservation in Sandwich, uh, Mashpee River Reservation in Mashpee and some places like the Lyman Reserve in Bourne or, or some of our properties in Plymouth. Um, so we are, you know, we are a growing organization, a, a, a long-standing organization, and one that uh, is now pretty excited at the prospect of having a presence in Austria. That's great. I know, um, I'm sure people are, who are familiar with Chronicle, it seems like every time I turn on that show, the trustees of the reservation are featured there, and it's like there's so many places that I want to go visit because they're, they're all so beautiful, and you do, you're like, I mean, just the best at maintaining and preserving, and we're very lucky to have you. Um, as taking care of these great properties. So what um, interests you in Osterville? Well, so we, we have a, a pretty exciting project uh, going on over at Armstrong Kelly Park. Um, we were approached by the Cape Cod Horticultural Society a little while ago about uh, potentially partnering in the preservation of that property forever. And um, right now, while we are still, um, we're still raising some, some funds to, to work on this integration, it looks like we're gonna integrate with the Cape Cod Horticultural Society, have them um, join the trustees and we'll, we would take on uh, operation and, and uh, preserve that park forever. So, um, you know, I know I came down and it, it is a beautiful 8.5 acres right in the middle of Osterville, um, undeveloped and with our mission to, to uh, preserve places like that, we're, we're really excited to be able to, to join in and, and make sure that that's saved forever. I know, and as a native of Osterville, I love the park and my backdrop right now happens to be um, one of my favorite parts of the park is the woods in back and it's just such a serene place and um, I just love walking through there. It's just like going away <laughs> for even like a few minutes. You're like on vacation and uh, it's really nice and I know how hard the horticultural has worked at Armstrong Kelly Park through the years and I think the average age of the volunteers is like 85 and God knows Dee's trying to do a lot of things there and they're always been a big part of the community. So just to see you um, carrying on that community aspect. I know you're going to be part of the um, Village Day run for the library and you're getting involved in more things in the community. So that's great. Do you have more ideas or? I do, yeah. And you know, you, you mentioned how hard the volunteers at, at CCHS have worked. Uh, I mean, that, the park has been a beautiful location in Osterville for over a century and they've never had full-time staff. So I mean, every time I show up at the property and I see any volunteers, I, I mean, I remark on the incredible labor of love um, it's gone on for, for decades to, to make that what it is. Um, and so I, I think it, it's a great opportunity here as, as they were thinking about the future and, and maintaining a volunteer base and doing all it takes to, to run the park, um, to bring in the trustees where we have, um, you know, the staff and the resources and the specialty specialization to, to really promise to preserve it forever. So it's a great partnership. Um, yeah, and in terms of the community and how we'll be involved, uh, well, one, we're going to keep this great uh, board at the Horticultural Society involved. They're going to become uh, a property committee for right. the trustee. They'll, they'll make, be leaders and, and their voices will be very present as we um, go through integration and, and then make plans for the future. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we, we really plan. Um, I think it's probably important to say that, that the spirit of the park and the, you know, what people expect when they go to visit it on a daily basis or go for their walk will, will very much remain the same. Like, you know, Cindy, you're the picture of the quiet woods behind you, and you mentioned how you can kind of get away, and it will remain a place for that for sure. Um, but we also, the trustees, do have um, goals to engage the public and bring people in to learn and, and build community. Um, and so we, you know, we're kind of working out what exactly it will look like, but you can envision walking through the park and seeing 
um, some people taking a class on pruning or, or you know, plant maintenance with our horticulturalists or children in a children's play group, um, children learning about pollinators and butterflies and that kind of thing. And then, you know, I've certainly learned a lot about the, the busy schedule in Osterville Village during the year. Um, we want to kind of jump in, find out what else people are looking to do, join in some of those big events like Village Days and the Fall Fests and things like that, um, and really uh, you know, add on and, and, and contribute to what's already a, a pretty impressive uh, community down there in the village. No, that's great. Well, we're really, I think it's just a, an amazing partnership, and I think it's, it would be so great to have the trustees as part of Osterville, and uh, it's nice to know that that beautiful park that so many people have labored over would love for years is going to be kept forever and so beautiful. So we're, we're really very fortunate um, that you're going to do it and then you're going to keep engaging and keep things. Do you see any major changes coming up or? Yes and no. Um, so right now, you know, the, really the last stage of, of this potential integration is a, is a fundraising campaign that we're running for the trustees. Um, and there's two parts to it. One is we, we want to raise about $1.25 million dollars um, for an endowment for the park and we promise to keep these places forever and preserve them forever and we want to be able to make that commitment with uh, the resources behind it and so that's that's stage one but it, it also includes a one million dollar investment in the park right away um, and so that's really that's really exciting and i think there will be things that are noticeably different and i think people will be excited about it um, but again we're, we're building on what's already a pretty special place um, and you know even we've already begun kind of talking about things with little leaders at the Cape Cod Horticultural Society. And a lot of this is ideas they've had and, and really the only thing slowing down implementation is, is resources. So we're trying to raise those resources. Um, you know, like that, that image behind you of the, of the woods, you know, if you can imagine maybe having the same shaded quiet woods, but with some, an understory of blossoming trees. Um, there's a great water feature in the park now, maybe slightly larger, right? Something people can sit around and gather around, adding to the collection of trees. Um, so there's great opportunity to, to really add some additional wow moments and, and build on what's already there. Um, and we, right now we're sort of entering the phase where we want to hear from the community. Um, so I, I do want to invite people um, on Fridays in July, so the 10th, 17th, and 24th. Uh, there'll be staff from the trustees and representatives from Cape Cod Horticultural Society in the garden from five to six. Um, you know, we, in the midst of coronavirus, we can't have a big big community meeting and get everyone together, but we're just inviting folks, come walk through. We'll be outside there. You can talk to us individually. Um, we'll have some initial thoughts and plans for the garden and we want to get feedback on what, what people want to see there. Um, and really engage the community in that. That's great. Well, I know um, you were featured uh, the cover story for the Experience Osterville Guide. So if people want to learn more information about the park and maybe a little bit of history, they can pick up the Experience Osterville Guide. And I think there's information in there on how to contact you or contact the um, park or go to the website, which I'm sure will be getting updated or. Uh. Yeah, I think there's probably, in, I think there is information about um, certainly contacting the Horticultural Society um, and they're gonna remain very important in this whole process going forward. Um, anyone can always reach out to me. My email is agallagher at the trustees.org. So if folks can't come and meet us in the park, um, they can send me an email with, with thoughts and feedback. Um, and it really is important to get that engagement. You know, the, the, okay. that uh, has a lot of history. There are um, memorials in there that are really important to people. Um, and, you know, we, we, have, we are learning about that and, and we'll continue that. You know, things may be different in, in the redesign, but all that kind of spirit and, and the memorials and, and all that will be captured. And so um, hearing kind of how they're important to people and why they're important is, is, is really valuable to us at this point. I know my mother's got a bench in there, so. <laughs> I know it is it, it really is a special place and uh, it's it's in the heart of the village and um, and I mean everybody should take such ease with the trustees reputation that you know we know for sure how you'll be so involved in the, the community and, and make it such a great ex learning experiences for all ages and that is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the trustees or anything that's going on Will the um, events be Facebook events that or go out in the newsletters or social media that um, we can share at the library to let people know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once once we kind of get those up and running, we'll we'll want to actually the library would be a great place to share, and we want to learn about all the all the places people already go to, so we can make it easy for people to find us. Um, but they'll be on our website. Um, you know, when, once we get the systems up and running, I think people will be able to find them pretty easily. Um, 
And in the meantime, you know, as we run these in partnership with CCHS, you know, I think there'll be drop-in programs. So, uh, you know, we're, we were just talking about Village Day and what that may look like. Um, we plan to be there in one way or another and, and offer something safely and have a presence. So um, we'll just be around too and people can pop in. Well, that's great. Well, it's really nice talking with you today and um, thank you for taking the time. And uh, I'm sure everybody will be thrilled and you, you'll be hearing from them and they'll be sending you lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I, I, I'm looking forward to meeting more people and I really appreciate your support. And it's, it's been great talking to you today. Okay. Thank you.